In this video, we're going to continue building our moving platform. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my print string. So as long as we set this right here, we, we do need that and then we'll pull off of this node. Now let's conceptually think about this. What we need to do is we need to move this platform from here to there. Now, if we animate an absolute position, so if we say move it from this spot to this spot, then any time we have multiple platforms, so if I um, hold Alt and drag and duplicate another one, just like that, and I'm gonna move this cube so nothing crazy happens, we actually want to animate the, rel the relative location and we want this to be zero. So what we wanna do is be able to say, um, from zero, animate 10 or 100 or 1000 upwards. But we can't really do that easily if we don't have a way to convert this. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get the current position that so that I can use it for calculation. So I need to store the initial position of this blueprint moving platform and store it in a local hidden variable. And same thing, this one would store its local position. And then we can do some math to calculate this uh, relative position. Because again, it, you know, it can be complicated if you want to animate in world space with multiple things right here. And we wanna keep this really clean. So good practice is when animating, you want your, um, your transformations to be local and you wanna use the global as a positioner type of thing. That didn't make sense. Don't worry about it. We'll show you the code. So we're gonna go back into here. So the first thing I wanna do is I do want to store my initial position and I'm going to um, pull this down first. And this is going to be um, something called a, well, they call it a position. It's a, a vector three. So I'm gonna make a new variable here. I'm gonna call this init pause, or you could fill that out and say position. POS, and then change the variable type. You'll see here vector. Um, oh, I guess it is, they call it a vector. This is, my transform is everything combined. That's my position, rotation, and scale. A vector is just an X, Y, Z, so this could be position or scale. And rotator is gonna be um, probably some form of complicated quaternion type thing. But for my position, I just need an X, Y, Z, so I'm gonna change this to type vector. And we have this one here, so in it, pause, let me move this out. We also want our initial rotation. So I'm gonna make another variable called init rot, awesome names here. And then init rotation, I'm gonna change this to type rotator. If you wanted a scale, which we're not gonna bother with, you could, you know, that would be another vector three. And the first thing I wanna do is when we begin play, I wanna keep track of its current position and store it. So to do that, I'm just going to drag into my scene, my init, init pause. And I, I wanna set this to be something new. So I'm gonna say set init pause right here. So on begin play, I want to set my initial position to be, and then, well, I need to grab the initial position. So I'm gonna grab my static mesh. I'm gonna get a reference over here. So what is the initial position of this static mesh object, right? Let's run a function to get that. If we drag off of static mesh, we type get relative transform, and you'll see this gives us a transform right here. And don't forget that the transform type is everything combined. So it's vector, position, rotator, uh, vector, scale. And a way to break this down, it's called splitting the struct um, or, or split struct pin, I guess. If you right click here and you split struct pin, this is just saying, I wanna go one level deeper and see what's inside of that container. And now we can see it's a location, a rotation and a scale. That's all that's doing is you can have a more complicated uh, container class and you could split it up into smaller things. So inside of here, we want the relative transform of the static mesh. I wanna set that, you know, store that initial position, pull this over. And I also wanna set, drag over and it, so set, initial rotation, pull that in. I wanna set this initial rotation right here and then start our movement, right? Don't wanna to forget to do this. And we're gonna group all this together right here. 
And now that we have our initial position, we can start doing more things. I'm gonna group all this in a comment. Say store start position. Okay, and now that we have this, we can actually calculate the position we wanna to move to from its current position. So to do that, um, I'm gonna do one more thing in this video. I'm actually going to create a variable for an intended position. So it would be really nice if as a designer, I could actually drag a position in the world and say, I want this platform to move from its current position to, and then drag a location and maybe we put it at the corner up here. I think that'd be pretty cool. So let's set that up. To do that, we are going to make a new variable that will be public that the designer can see. I'm gonna click new variable. And I'm gonna make this a uh, destination transform. So we'll just call this destination. I think is self-explanatory. We will make this public because we do want the designer to see this. We'll change the variable type. Um, this one we wanna, we wanna do as a transform because we do wanna be able to position and rotate it. Instance editable, and this is a cool little option. We can actually show the 3D widget, and if we do that, we should be able to see it inside of our scene. So first let me compile save. So right now we can't see it. If I click show 3D widget on this new variable that I'm gonna expose to the designer, compile save. See, now we have this little diamond thing that we can click and move somewhere. Maybe we move it to the top right there. And you'll see each one is different, right? I could make different moving platforms with different end destinations. And even though we're exposing this and you see this destination, if you wanna manually put it in, you know, you could do that too. If I hit play, okay, you'll see we don't really see that in game, so that's good. We have our starting position and our end destination and I think I'm actually gonna cut this video off here um, just to show you that you, you do wanna get that stuff at the beginning, but I don't want this to get too long because we have a lot of math to do here. But I think it's important to think about local space and how we can get our starting position and convert that uh, and then get our destination. And then we can just calculate and figure out how to get from our start position to our destination based off of our zero to one value. So that's what we're gonna do next and it's just a lot of nodes. So we'll, we'll tackle that in the next video.